Hello, hello, Mike. It's Robert here. How are you? Hey, Robert. How are you doing? Thank you. Yes, thank you for yeah. being there. Um, appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. So, yeah, that question you asked about Christendom, um, it's it's not one that we really... Uh, it's best, really, for you to figure it out, if you um, know what I mean. Well, it's, a, it's actually three things I'm looking at. The first... I'm looking at my laptop. I don't have the internet at home, so I can't access jw.org. Um, but right. I've written some notes out in Word. The first part is theocracy. Yeah. Um, you claim that a theocracy was established in the year 1919. The second is the phrase to Christ true Christians, T-R-U-E Christians. And I've got a sort of timeline from 1971 to 20, October 2020 watchtowers which trace the definition of true christians by which i think you mean jehovah's witnesses and then well, the third and then the third one would be um the churches of christendom what you term christendom so there's actually three three points to this one leads naturally to the other <clears throat> uh, what was the first one again theocracy yeah well theocracy just means god rule doesn't it theo is greek for god Yes, I'm, so, I'm, 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 I'm fully aware of that. Um, I'm going to give you an example. Um, Paradise Restored to Mankind by Theocracy, published 1972, pages 201, 202. Um, wow, you've really read some, haven't you? <laughs> Those older yes, books. Uh, yes, yeah, someone's just trying to get through to me. Um, sorry, sorry about that. Um, it says, we read that the theocratic organisation was built up I think that means begun in 1919. And then I've also found a watchtower for the 15th of July 2013. I don't know the exact pages for this. I should I should go back and get the exact pages, but it's between pages 9 and 14. And paragraph 6 and paragraph 12 talk about the appointment as a theocracy in 1919. And footnote four on paragraph 14 outlines a new definition in the way that this date is calculated wow i don't i haven't looked at that i'll have to that to look out because you see the governing body don't, don't um claim to be you know infallible so they uh as they see as they look at some of the scriptures they would make assumptions based on um, current knowledge but those so we don't always refer to those old books because as it says in the Bible, the light gets brighter, and as more understanding is thrown on things, like the air, the first Bible students, I mean, they were some were Christadelphi, some were this, some were that, from different parts of Christendom, and uh, they all did Christmas. They, you know, this is back in the, the, the late eighteen hundreds. So, uh, as time's gone on, you know, as they've discovered what is acceptable to the Creator, as in the Bible, then they've dropped certain things. That, uh, you know, celebrations, views, looks at the way they saw things, and a lot of it's been a need-to-know basis. So as Mike, I mean, I'm asking, Mike, I'm asking I, Mike, I, Mike, I'm only interested in three things. I'm interested in the theocracy. I'm interested in the use of the phrase to true Christians," T R U E, true Christians in the Watchtower material, and oh. then I'm looking at the term Christendom and your opinion about yeah. the Catholics and the Protestant churches. Uh, at the moment, I don't want to look at really anything else. I, 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 I can't look at multiple multiple things. I'm only really interested in that. Yeah, all right, all right, fair enough, fair point. Um, that first question, I'd have to look at what those books said in detail and read it myself. I mean, you've got an advantage over that. Well, I did, let I, you, I did let you know in text what I would be, what I'm actually looking at. OK, um, the second thing... <clears throat> would be the term true Christians. Yeah. And I found a watch that... Sorry, it's after you. Yeah, so a, a true Christian would be somebody that is Christ-like. So whatever Jesus said and did and acted like, that would be classed as a true Christian. So if, if somebody was to do something or, live, or believe a certain thing or live a certain life that wasn't in harmony with... Christ's teachings, then they would be not classed as a true Christian. By 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 true Christians, you mean Jehovah's Witnesses? Well, yeah, I, 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 that's for you to decide to find out. 
I've, I'm, I was with it. I've spent an awful lot of time. I've been at this for many hours today and yesterday, Mike, looking at this. Um, yeah. uh, the Watchtower for the 15th of July, 1971, page 422, says the churches of Christendom cannot make true Christians. be a true Christian if you are being taught falsehood, can you? You would have to, you know, just just as... Um, but, you, but you've just said that Jehovah's Witnesses have been taught falsehoods. You said the light gets brighter and brighter, which means that at one time, many years ago, they were taught falsehoods. I thought you, you talked about Christmas and birthdays. They used to keep Christmas and birthdays. So if they were being yeah. taught falsehoods then... Um, That's why... They didn't take on Jehovah's name until 1940. Um, was it, 19, also, was know, it 1931? I can't remember. That'd be something like that, yeah. Yeah. And based, there was a convention based on the uh, Isaiah you know, yes. uh, uh, scriptures about Jehovah's picking ones that will be witnesses. Yes. 35, I think it was, 1935. Yes. Anyway. Um, so, I mean, it's you, you, you know... It, true Christian, you have to de decide yourself what the Bible says. Uh, uh, no, at the moment, I'm just trying to understand your literature. Right. I'm just trying to understand it, because I can't come to a conclusion unless I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I get, yeah, yeah I'd have to yeah. look up that, but that's an old watchtower. And, uh, you know, things have changed since then. So, I, I, you know, I'd have to see... I'd have to look at that watch so and have a look at it and have a think about it. So do you believe today that the Baptist Church and the Anglican Church and the Methodist Church and the Catholic Church and the Pentecostal Churches, do you believe they make true Christians today? There could be true Christians amongst them. And I think eventually, you know, you have to follow what it says in the Bible. And if you are being taught the pagan teachings or unchristian teachings, um, then... How can you, a true Christian would come out, wouldn't it? So, come out of an organisation like that. So when you say, when I asked you, are there true Christians amongst the Baptists, Methodists, Anglicans, Catholics, Pentecostals, your answer is basically, if they leave and join the Jehovah's Witnesses, then they are and they were true Christians. But if well, they no, stay no, in, they're not true no, Christians. No, I wouldn't like to say that. I wouldn't okay. like to say that at all. Okay. And we're not, we're not, it's not for us to judge anybody. Or, or, or it's just like, why, why are you, if you were in a Baptist church, yeah. it's because you read the Bible and you talked, you know, had studies with, and maybe, uh, or maybe it's because you just want to be in a social... Now, I don't know why, why somebody wants to be Baptist, but they have to answer it themselves. They have to follow the Bible and see what's being taught in the Baptist church, or, or whichever one it is, and decide themselves. They might decide that that is mm. the truth is true Christian, and that's mm -hmm. up to them, and that's their conscience. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. don't judge anybody. We love all people and want to help everybody understand the, the wonderful message in the Bible. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we, don't, we, don't, we wouldn't like to say that any individual was not a Christian. It's not our place. Um, I don't plan on visiting Hull for a while, but if I, if I did, I'd like to know which, which congregation are you with in, in Hull, Mike? I think you said Inglemire Lane Kingdom Hall. But is there a congregation well, you're connected with, or? Yeah, but we don't we don't use the Kingdom Halls now. We 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 have our congregation on Zoom. Yeah, I know. Because right. of the which which thing. which 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 congregation are you? Um, Derringham congregation. De Derringham in Hull. Okay. Sorry, no, it's not Derringham. It's not Derringham. It's been Sorry? changed, and it's, it's we changed actually. It was Derringham for a number of years. We we amalgamated with another con congregation. We're at Pearson Park now. Pearson Park congregation. Okay. Well, if I do come to Hull, at least I um, know who to, who, who, who to ask for. Um, another watchtower that I found was the 15th of November, 1981, page, page 21. And it says, while now the witness yet includes the invitation to come to Jehovah's Organization for Salvation. It says, come yeah. to Jehovah's Organization for Salvation. Would that be meaning that you must join the Jehovah's Witness faith and be a baptised Jehovah's Witness for salvation? Well, just like and just like Jesus, if you went to him and the, and the disciples and asked how, did, how does one get saved, he would say, you know, through baptism. 
Oh, I don't so believe I that. That's a that's a Roman Catholic teaching. That's baptismal regeneration. I definitely believe that's false doctrine. No one's well, saved because they're baptized. Well, no, you have to be in a saved condition by carrying on. He who, he who carries on till the end, Jesus said, didn't he? Would, would survive. So, baptism is is just a dedication to God and an outward symbol of your to, to the world that you are now a Christian. So, you know, but you would have to carry on doing the best you can, um, uh, praying and living a Christian life. So you're not once saved, always saved. No, we don't believe that. We believe that you can be in a safe condition as long as you keep in contact with God and keep trying your best um, to serve him. And then you're in a safe condition, but you, you're not, you know, you can't just get baptized and then that's it, you're done. It's an onward going thing, just like the disciples, you know, some of them fell away. Like Paul said, you know, I used to write with them and now I have many tears and I know some have fallen away. So, you know, no one is um, in a saved condition just because of one act. Righteousness, it's, uh, it's an onward going thing being a Christian. So, are you now saying that a person does not need to be baptised in order to be a Christian? Baptism is not necessary for salvation. I'm just trying to figure yeah, out what you're actually saying. It's, that's like, it's like a beginning. It's like the beginning, but it's, you know, it's not... You would, you would, have, you would want accurate knowledge of the first thing, because you have to know what you're getting baptised in, so accurate knowledge of Christianity, and then you would um, feel, then you would look at your life and there'd be a, a repentance side of it that you would regret not being a Christian earlier. And then there would be a conversion where you would be turn away from any practices that you know would be displeasing to God through the scriptures in principle and, and trying to do good works then, you know, associating with, with good associates and doing good works. Then you would dedicate yourself to God in your heart. That you want to worship him and serve him for the best of your ability for the rest of your life. And then you would get baptised in underwater, full immersion, as a symbol to the world that you are now Christian. So that, that's how we view baptism. But again, it's only the beginning. I mean, I got baptised in 1983, and uh, I'm still trying to be a good Christian. And now I'm 60, so mm -hmm. you know, 40 years. So, yeah. so it, it, we don't like to condemn anybody because why should we? Who, who are we to say someone is a Christian or isn't? If somebody says to me that you know they're a Christian and when they die they're off to heaven, I don't disagree with them. That, that's up to them. I, you know, I, I'm not. We don't do that. You know, I don't understand your angle. What, what's your motive for looking I, I, into the? Battle? I'm I'm trying to understand what your literature means by theocracy, by the term two true Christians and Christendom. Well, in the scriptures, we believe <clears> when <throat> Jesus said the faithful, discreet slaves give out the food to its domestics, that this was uh, an, an, an earthly organisation that would be around um, alongside the great preaching campaign um, that would be going on during the time of the end before Armageddon. So it would be there to feed and encourage and uh, help the Christians uh, to come together to be able to do this great preaching campaign in the whole, in the known world. So that's what the Jewish Witnesses have, have done. So um, um, we think uh, the theocracy uh, is an earthly organisation. It's part of God's organisation to help get the preaching done and encourage those that worship God. So that theocracy is just God using man to keep Christianity strong and look for new ones before Armageddon. Um, thank you. God rule, it's the rule of God, isn't it? So the principles of God on the air. Any any organisation that tries to do that would be viewed as theocracy, wouldn't it? Not not um, as opposed to politics and man's, uh, you know, being ruled by the state. There's there's nothing in the Bible which says that Jehovah chose the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society in 1919 or at any time, or that God has chosen any organisation. I believe that's total misnomer. No Bible verse says that. If you go to Matthew 24, 45, you'll notice that the this is just a parable. It's a contrast between a faithful servant and an unfaithful servant. It's not some 
it's not some grand plan that in the year 1830 God appointed the Mormon church as his theocracy on earth or in the 1860s God chose the Christadelphians to be his theocracy on earth or in the 18... 40s or 1850s whenever it was God chose the Seventh-day Adventist under um, Ellen G. White to be his theocracy on earth or in the 1950s God chose Victor Paul Werwell of the way in, of the way in, of the way international as his theocracy on earth there is absolutely nothing here that talks about God choosing an organization um, also uh, notice that it says could I could I could I actually read the verse rather than just talking the third person about it, Mike? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Notice in verse thirty-seven that the faithful servant is made ruler after the Lord's return. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, who his master makes ruler over his household to give food in due season? Blessed is that servant who his master, when he comes, will find him so doing. Verse forty-seven. Notice this is after his return. Assuredly, I say to you, he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink with drunkards. The master of that servant will come in a day when he is not looking for him and an hour where he is not aware of. He will cut him in two and appoint him a portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So this is just a it's just a story. It's just a parable. It's not some grand design that God is going to choose some organization on a specific point in time. Christ hasn't returned. The second coming of Christ is after Armageddon. It hasn't happened yet. But if you're going to take this this um, parable literally, literally and say there is a faithful and wise servant who's going to be appointed, then verse, verse 47 says that that faithful and wise servant is going to be appointed after the Lord's return. Christ hasn't yeah, returned. Well. Christ, the second coming of Christ hasn't happened yet. So if this well, is to be taken right. literally, then then a faithful and wise servant is going to be appointed in the still future after Christ's second coming. Yeah, but that's we we don't think that we think Jesus came in 1914. But Bible doesn't the purposes. Bible doesn't the Bible doesn't say that. There's no there's no Bible verse which says Jesus came in 1914 and. He appointed the Watchtower no, Society in 1919. Well, there's, there's, you, there, you know, there's as much proof for that as there is for the claims of the Mormon Church, or Ellen G. White and the Seventh Day Adventist, or Christian Science, or some um, Pentecostal TV preacher. There honestly is yeah. as much evidence for that as there is for all of these religious beliefs, which is zero. But if you look at Matthew 24, and um, when the disciples looking Jesus and the disciples looking down at his temple and uh, he was talking about its demise uh, then they were asking about what will it be like you need to quote the yeah. verse if, you, if you're gonna you know don't talk in the third person because if you if you talk in vague generalized unpacific terms you can read anything into the Bible you know a Mormon could say well you know Matthew 24 obviously this is talking about the prophet Joseph Smith and Jesus and God the Father appearing at the first vision to Joseph Smith and then we read on in Matthew 24 and obviously you know it's a reference to the creation of the temples and the Mormon temple ceremony and whether you speak to a Mormon or a Christadelphian or a Seventh-day Adventist or whatever they are or a, a lunatic Pentecostal TV TV preacher they just read what they believe into the Bible. They read it into the text of the Bible and they get away with it because they don't actually read the text. They just talk in generalized, unpacific terms, paraphrasing, usually out of context, a couple of Bible verses here and a couple of Bible verses there, safe in the knowledge that no one's actually going to read the verse and look at it in context and see what the text of the Bible actually says. You know, if you, if you don't do that, Mike, you can make the Bible mean absolutely anything. Yeah, yeah, I get your point. It's true. I mean, yeah. And they try and prove when uh, Pentecostals try and prove the Trinity, they, they just quote parts of verses like when he said, "I and the Father are one." No, oh, please, please, please. I... <sighs> and the next verse says just that you and I are one, and they don't they don't read that bit. And yeah. you know, in the context of John one one, where it says in the beginning God, Jesus was with God. There's a lots of widths, but they just pick on. One, one verse to try and prove that Jesus is part of this trinity. Or um, the trinity doesn't, doesn't have parts. 
I used to go to a Pentecostal church. I went to a Baptist and a Pentecostal church and I went occasionally to an Anglican church 10 years ago and I gave it up as a waste of my time because these people often don't know what they're talking about. But I can assure you the Trinity as defined in the creeds does not have parts. Okay, that's not Trinitarian doctrine. I don't want to get sidetracked because we did agree. I'm looking at theocracy. I'm looking at the term true Christians and I'm looking at the term Christendom. And I really would like to stick to that if that's if that's possible, sir. Yeah. Well, I, 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 to the best of my ability, without reading those older watchtowers, theocracy means God rules, so it would be God's principles and uh, for, for mankind. So it would how how humans viewed those principles and carried them out. So we we believe that we should preach the goodness of the kingdom, we should be a congregation, all of the set up... Sorry, I don't know what you're up. talking about. I don't know what you're well, talking Paul about. Paul set up the, the, the congregations, didn't he? How, and, and under Jesus Christ's direction. Paul was blinded on the road, wasn't he? And he changed and became a Christian. And he opened congregations and looked for feet and went on his missionary tours. So that we tried to follow all what it, the Mike, Christian. Mike, could I make yeah. a suggestion? Why don't you get a pen and paper, copy down the watchtowers which I've been reading, study um, them, and, and get back to me once you've done a bit of work on, on, on these? Would that be a, a, a good thing for us to do? Uh, well, it just sounds got like an, an aggression going on. I don't know if you really. Well, want... I'm just frustrated because I did tell you by text. I'm looking at the term, the concept of the theocracy. I'm looking at the term true Christians. I'm not trying to be aggressive, but you, you're you're just changing the topic well, and talking well, about other just, things. Just, and the third thing is Christendom. Yeah, just out of interest, what do you think theocracy means? It means rule by God. Direct rule by God from heaven uh, through some organisation or some person here on the earth. Right. The most, the so most, when... the most common theocracy is Roman Catholicism, which teaches apostolic succession. That the Pope is the uh, two hundred and sixty something successor of Peter. So Pope Francis is the two hundred and sixty whatever it is successor of Peter, and therefore he claims apostolic succession. Therefore, to some extent, Roman, Roman Catholicism is some sort of a theocracy. A more hardline theocracy would be, say, the teachings of the Mormon Church, which claim that God the Father and, Joseph, and um, the Son of God appeared to Joseph Smith in 1830 and, and it gave him this vision. And um, basically, he wrote the Book of Mormon and he established the Mormon Church, which is the only organization that God rules through um, God rules from heaven, but he rules through the Mormon church on earth and through the Mormon prophet. So that's that's the basis of theocracy. So do you, do you believe that then? Of course not. It's just complete oh, idiocy. Okay. So do you believe in God at all? Yes, I'm a, I'm a Trinitarian, yeah, but I, I don't believe in theocracy. I don't believe that God rules through the Mormon church or through the, the, the Catholic Pope or through the leaders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I don't believe I have to go on my knees before the Pope or before some Mormon prophet or before some Seventh-day Adventist leader and oh. that my salvation is through them. Christ said, come to me, all you who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. I, I, I. Come to me, all you who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. I think that's Matthew eleven, twenty-eight. I think I think that's where it is. He doesn't say he doesn't say go to the Mormon church and the Mormon church will give you rest. He doesn't say look look and find a pope or look and find some theocracy and go to them. Go on your knees before uh, your your holy father the pope and then the pope will give you rest because the pope mediates the grace of God. Jesus said it's is Matthew 11:28 come to me all you who labor and are heavily laden and I Christ will give you rest. That's right. So when Jesus, when Jesus uh, set up the Christian congregations in the first century, I mean, great quote in Revelation when he describes the seven congregations and gives them commendation and counsel. You know, he, he didn't view them as completely unrelated to God. He viewed them as the congregations of God, the, the lampstands with the elders, and he gave them commendation. He said, "Don't forget the love you had at first." And, and he had specific counsel and accommodation for each congregation. So he viewed them as God ruling on the air. Through, through those congregations, they were small, mini-organizations.
organizations of Jehovah on the air, and he was the, Jesus is the head of the of congregation. So we, we, we follow the congregational procedures and, the, and and try to keep back to that. We don't jump on to two or three hundred years later when the, when Constantine took over Christianity and, and mixed it with pagan beliefs. We we try to carry keep going the way Paul and the early Christians met and the things they believed in and carry on with those. We don't try to change that. So we we try, always try to get back to to Christianity. That, that's I feel that that's you know what I've seen. And um, Paul, we we have servants and elders. You know we have everything that goes on in the first century, and um, we try to make that fit. Uh, the preaching work of it, they didn't have printing, they didn't have they were preached to the known world. You know, and so we think that a lot of apostasy came in because the apostle said it would afterwards. Um, Catholicism and then Protestants broke off from that. Then you had all these different, um, like you say, Mormons and different ones. So it's up for an individual to read the Bible and see which religion, if any, fits the principles in the, in the Bible and the, uh, the, the apostolic congregational way things were done there. And if you think that you found, you know, a, a religion... Um, excuse me, Mike, I've told you several times, Mike, I'm only interested in the terms theocracy, the terms true Christians, which I'm trying to understand, and the term Christendom. And I just find that I don't, you said I'm aggressive, and sir, I don't mean to be rude. I'm, I'm one year younger than you, I'm 59. Uh, I spent many hours today, went to a cafe with free internet access, and I was there from about 11 o'clock to about six o'clock. So I was there for six hours, and the day before I was there for about eight or nine hours. So I've been at this right. for hours, I'm putting a lot of time in, and I, I don't wish to be rude, I don't wish to be offensive. But every time I open my mouth, you change the topic and subject and talk about something else. Can I just go through this watchtower? Um, okay. Yeah. Right. Um, I think the last one I got to was the 15th of November, 1981, page 21, which says, Come to Jehovah's Organization for Salvation. Um, that what? seems to be different to me from Matthew 11:28, where Jesus says, Come to me for salvation. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. The rest mentioned there is the eternal Sabbath rest in Christ. When you have faith or you trust in Christ, that's the fulfillment of the Sabbath rest, not some Seventh-day Adventist group meeting on a Saturday. Um, no. It says in the Watchtower for the 1st of March 2011, page 6, that the churches cannot produce converts who are true Christians. So, so, let me just find it. I'm just looking at yeah. one up. So it's... Um... First of March 2011. Uh, I've taken a scan of that. How are the churches doing in this regard? Which, and which on that one, 2011 March, which one is it? First of March 2011, sir, page six. It says, how are the okay. churches doing in this regard? And then the paragraph finishes, they do not produce true Christians who sincerely seek to live in harmony with what Jesus taught. So it seems to be saying that the Baptists, the Methodists, the Anglicans, the Catholics, the Pentecostals do not produce any true Christians at all. Was it under an article called What is God's Kingdom? I, I really don't know because I don't have the internet and I don't have the magazine. Um, I, I've got a program where I can scan. So what I have done is I've scanned two paragraphs and I've titled it WT Watchtower 2011, 1st of March, page 6. The paragraph starts, how are the churches doing in this regard? That's why I'm saying I thought what you would have wanted to have done is to sort of scribble down the research I've been looking at and then we could speak at another time. Um, yeah. Uh, I thought that would be a sort of better use of our time, possibly, sir. Um, and okay. give you time to sort of look at this. So we've got, let me just write this down then. Can I just write this down? Yeah, so yeah sure. The first one is 1st of March, page 6. 2011. Watchtower, yes. Is it a study article or the other one? I don't know because I don't have this watchtower. 
and I don't have the internet at home, and I, I, I cannot scan thousands of pages on my laptop, so I've just scanned the relevant point. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, that was the one that talked about, uh, just write down... Um, it's saying that the churches do not produce true Christians, because I think the phrase true Christian um, in the Watchtower literature, I think it applies to Jehovah's Witnesses. I think that's how you refer to yourself, you see, as true Christians. Would you refer to yourself as a true Christian? Um, well, the Bible just uses the word Christian. You're either Christian or not a Christian. So all Christians are true Christians, yes. Uh, in, yeah, well, okay. So well, we would agree if you act like a, like Christ, then you're a true Christian. But if you say you're a Christian, but really you worship the devil, then you're not a Christian, are you? All right. Well, that's an interesting point. Um, um, well, anybody could say anything, couldn't they? That that that's. Um, I mean, you know, you could say you could say you're a Protestant, but lie, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. You'd okay. have to stick to you know, the only way anyone could ever. And when it's not in the business of judging each other, if you say you are, then I'm happy for you. you know, but we wouldn't we wouldn't say one person is not a true Christian, another person is. It's a generalised statement. Well, you, that in well, the you, well, you clearly do, because you say the churches of Christendom cannot make true Christians. Watchtower, 15th of July, 1971, page 422. 50-year-old Watchtower, yeah, maybe that says that, but whether we currently think that, I'll have to check. Well, it says in, it says in the Watchtower for October 2020, so that's this month, page 12, paragraph 16 and 17... Paragraph 16 says true Christians must leave their churches, which are all of Babylon the Great. Yeah. Well, maybe that's good. That's what it says. So, you know, if if, um, if the Bible prophesies something that, that we believe, Babylon the Great is the empire of false religion um, in the world. So religions that are not pleasing to God, you know. So therefore, we we call that Babylon the Great. Um, so the yes. prophecy in Revelation. So if, if you know if uh, somebody belongs to a church that we feel is not teaching the truth, then they need to leave it, don't they? Um, yes, that's what um, paragraph seventeen I think goes on. To, no, it's not paragraph seventeen. Let me have a look. Well, true Christians must lead their churches, which are all of Babylon the Great. Uh, these verses identify something else that Jehovah expects of his worshippers. All true Christians must maintain a clear distinction between themselves and Babylon the Great. So when it says yeah. a clear distinction, um, it then goes on this article to talk about them leaving churches. Before learning the truth, a Bible student may have been a member of a false religion. I think by that they mean every religion other than the Jehovah's Witnesses. He may have attended its religious services and shared in its activities. Or he may have contributed money to such an organisation. Before a Bible student can be approved as an unbaptized publisher, that means Jehovah's Witness, who goes door to door but hasn't been baptised, I think, he must break all ties with false religion. He should submit a letter of resignation or otherwise completely sever his membership of his former church and in any other organisation that has ties to Babylon the Great. So it's saying that he must leave his former church formally. And I think it goes on to say, when it says uh, Babylon the Great, it's saying that all churches are part of Babylon the Great. Have I got that right? Uh, well... You, you have to work it out yourself. You have to just see what goes on in that church and see if it's, if it's, if it's in harmony with God's principles and laws. I mean, they're basing that on the book of Revelation that said, get out of here, my people. Yeah, but, this, want to but when it says that, it doesn't mention a Baptist church or an Anglican church or... No, you have to... You you have could to be... It's for the reader to discern right. what is Christian conduct and what isn't. Yeah, um, I mean, so, there are people well, who would say that Jehovah's Witnesses are a false religion. The the, the well, Mormons would say Jehovah's Witnesses. Opinion. The the Mormons would say Jehovah's Witnesses are a false religion. 
the Seventh Day Adventist would say Jehovah's Witnesses are. I, I would religion. hope that any any person got belong in any church isn't just going along with it. That they've read the scriptures and they feel in their heart and their conscience through what they've learned in the Bible that they're following true Christianity. And they, you know, if, if they are following true Christianity, then they would think that any other religion isn't quite doing it right. By true so, Christianity, do you mean the teaching of the Jehovah's Witnesses, the current teaching of the no, Jehovah's the Witnesses? the teaching of the Bible, teaching of Christ, the principles. The, the, the teaching out. of the Bible as interpreted by the leaders of the Jehovah's Witness religion. Well, it's not interpreted unless you believe it, is it? If it's, it, you just... Like you just read the, the the thing where Jesus said, "Come under my yoke, I'll refresh you, and I'm, and and my Lord is light." So he's saying he'll, he'll get under the yoke with you, he'll help you to be a Christian. So you know, what is a true Christian, Mike? Someone that acts like Christ. Right. So would that be people in Baptist? A few. I'm not saying everyone is is a true Christian, but would there be some true Christians in Baptist, Methodist, Anglican, Pentecostal churches? I believe so. I hope so. Hope so. So you believe that there are true Christians who are not Jehovah's Witnesses, and yeah, right. But this, but this article, October two thousand and nineteen, Watchtower, page twelve, paragraph sixteen. These verses identify something else that Jehovah expects of his worshippers. All true Christians must maintain a clear distinction between themselves and Babylon the Great. Yeah, and it goes on to say. Out of he should. So you have to decide yourself what you think. What is Babylon the Great? I'm asking you. you. I want to know what the official position of the Watchtower is. Is Babylon the Great, the Catholic and the Protestant churches? Uh, no, it's all the empire of all false religion. Right. So the you empire mean? of false, re all false religion. Um, I read that in Revelation. It's grand climax at hand, page two, three, five. Um, yeah. In fact, I've just got the book and it's just opened on that page. That's every religion, every so-called Christian religion, but it would not include the, the, the Jehovah's Witness faith. Let me just read it to you. I'm reading from paragraph two, the end of paragraph two on page 235 of Revelation, its grand climax at hand. We read, however, that by her spiritualistic practice, all the nations were misled. This makes it clear that the great harlot must be a worldwide religious entity. Which religious entity? Is she the Roman Catholic Church, as some have maintained, or is she all of Christendom? No, she must be an even larger than this if she is to mislead all the nations. She is, in fact, the entire world, relig em world empire of false religion. Page 235, Revelation, its grand climax at hand. So it talks about Christendom, and it's saying that every church of Christendom is a part of this great harlot mentioned in Revelation 17. I think that is your position, isn't it? Yeah, but not individuals. I'm not asking about individuals. I'm talking about the church institutions. The ch yeah, the churches themselves. Right. Um, if they are teaching all sorts. All of them. Pagan teachings, and they are part of Babylon the Great. All of them. All of them. Okay. Um, um, I've done some more research. What, what do you think? Which prophecy? And it says, get out of her, my people, if you do not want to share in her sins. What yeah, I, I'd, I'd quite happily go through the book of Revelation and go through that if you want me to. But we did agree tonight. I was hoping um, to look at theocracy, true Christians and Christendom, which was my intention. Revelation 17 um, would apply to religious organisations. Uh, many of them that are in, in apostasy in the final days. And there's no doubt we can look around us and see a lot of apostasy. What I do not believe is that every single person in every single church without exception is a part of Babylon the Great or is an apostasy. I do believe there are a few, a minority of genuine Christians in all of the churches, be they yeah, Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox churches. Not many, but I believe there's some. So I don't think yeah, you can take Revelation 17 and say every single church institution is of the devil from that. Uh, um, but we've come now to Armageddon, they have to make a decision of whether to stay in an organisation. Can I, I don't think the Bible is interested in organisations at all. It, it's totally well, irrelevant to scripture. Are, the Bible doesn't, 
is not interested in organizations. Um, Religion, published in 1940, pages 82 and 83, talks about demons controlling the Catholic and Protestant clergymen. Yeah, well, that's such an old book, and I'm not going to comment on those. All right. Old. The 1975 yearbook of Jehovah's Witnesses, which was published, strangely, in 1974, on page 98, says, quote, Satan has used the Protestants and Catholics to destroy God's remnant. Well, yeah, I mean, if you if you'd have been if you'd have seen like in Canada, if you'd have seen when the when the witnesses preached there, you know they were tired and feathered, and most of the um, the opposition was uh, part of Christendom's influence on the municipal sort of governments, and they did have a hand in dishing out some hate against true Christians. So yeah, I can understand uh, that that being said. That um, just as you know, I mean, Catholic Pope did a, a, a pact with them, Hitler, didn't he, to leave the Vatican alone, and he would uh, and and through the von Papas in, in Germany that he got a lot it's of votes. Von, the, the, the guy's the guy's name is von Papen. He's a he was a yeah. former Chancellor of Germany, and he signed the Concordat. Help, so the Catholic he, he, he signed helped, the Concordat yeah. in 1933, yeah. Wow, you've got some good, good brain on you, haven't you? <laughs> um, I like to know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, okay, sure. um, the, uh, the Awake for the 22nd of April, 1993, page 6, calls the churches pawns of Satan. Mm. Well, if, 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 yeah, it's quite strong, isn't it? <laughs> And the watchtower for the 15th of July 2013, paragraph 13, page 13, paragraph 13. Um, I'm looking at notes, so I don't have the actual thing in front of me. It's It calls Christendom a, a part of the harlot false religion. I can see if I can find that, actually. Oh, no, I don't know where that would be. I don't know where that yeah, would be. Yeah, sounds about right. Sounds about right. But what, what's your question about it? You know, that's just a statement. You have a... Think it's true yeah, sure. don't. So, are you saying that every Catholic and Protestant and Orthodox Church are of Satan the Devil? They're part of this harlot, Babylon the Great. Individuals, individuals in any religion of free will, they can look and see what goes on in their church and the doctrines that are taught, and they can decide whether it is Christian or whether it's not Christian, and then get out. That's up to them. But as as a, a religion that teaches these doctrines that are ungodly and get involved in politics and stuff, that's, that's not... That's, 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 that, that's, that's something we could talk about at another time, because the Watched Eye Society is involved in politics and warfare. Perhaps we could leave that for another anyway. time. Because if you're going to uh, just say that, make a statement like that, you need to prove it, mate. But I don't want to go from topic to topic to topic. Um, would you be willing to discuss that another time? Do you I think believe... you've already made your mind up. You've already made your mind up. You, you know, you're an intelligent guy. You've looked at Do what you the believe... churches teach. You, you've looked at what we teach. You, you know, you can make your own mind up. Do you think we're not, we're, what we're saying is... is the the, the Watchtower has no, had an involvement for a hundred years in both warfare and in politics. Not, yeah, not throughout the no. whole time, in brief periods over the last hundred years. It's had involvement in politics and, and warfare. So if you're going to make well, a comment like that to say that the Jehovah's Witnesses are the true religion because they're not involved in politics and warfare, then you need to prove that. And you need to answer. Um, I mean, I feel we've achieved very little. Um, I'm grateful for your help, Mike. But um, for instance... You've me... already got the answer, haven't you? You've already, you're happy with what you know. And, you know, I mean, like Jehovah's Witnesses around the world and are renowned not for being peace pe people that don't get involved in you're politics. You're not listening to me. You're not listening to what I'm saying. 18-year-olds don't go to war, and we don't get involved in politics, we don't vote. And you, yet you are involved you, cho in... you choose to ignore all that. No, hold and on. say, yes, but you have once or twice got some little connection with war, so you've got a negative view already. You can't, you can't catch it, you mind. If it's a fact and it's true, then it's a fact and it's true. The Watchtower... For the 15th of May 1918, page 6257 of the Green Reprints, is an article written by Judge Rutherford. Okay, it's 102 years ago. 
in which he advocated the purchase of liberty loans or liberty bonds. Now, these were, this was money that you could loan the American government during the First World War to support the American military. And in the Watchtower, Rutherford writes, um, the International Bible Students Association is not against the liberty loan. Many of its members have bought and hold liberty bonds. And he goes on to promote the purchase of liberty bonds. He then writes on the other side of that page, page 6257, Members of our association who have some personal means have bought liberty bonds, including tabernacle workers who are paying 25% of their monthly allowance to purchase a bond. So Jehovah's Witnesses were encouraged in the First World War to support the American military through the purchase of the liberty bond or the liberty loan. Now, yeah, just... not, and in the First World War, they, they were unsure of what, how far to get involved in the war. Some thought, as long as you do medical services or fix the trucks and stuff. And then it was in the Second World War, as light got brighter, that they realised before the Second World War that we shouldn't be a part of any killing machine and not wear the uniform or pledge allegiance or be involved in the war machine at all on any side and any politics. So do you... All that, pay bonds, that, that, all, that was all just what he thought Mike. at that time. Mike, so do you, do, Mike, do you right. agree that in the First World War, according to that watchtower, your own watchtower, they supported the American military in the First World War? Yeah, there was a connection there, that's right. Okay, and the, and the witnesses who left, of course, who, who disagreed with Rutherford, they were known as the Standfast movement because they were standfast against the purchase of liberty bonds or liberty loans. Are you familiar with yeah, the Standfast yeah. movement? That's right, and they, they, that, on that particular thing, they got that right. Okay. Shouldn't have been involved in it. Right. But in the Second World War, according to another watchtower, 1st of June 1947, page 173, you also supported the American, the, the not the American, sorry, the Australian military in the Second World War. This is a watchtower, page 173, 1st of June 1947, which talks about Bethel service and young men who went forward for Bethel service it says that they ended up working in machine shops producing instruments of war or serving soldiers in canteens. There was also a farm called the Ingleburg Farm, which was opposite a military base. I think Ingleburg Farm eventually became the, they pulled it down and turned it into the Australian Bethel headquarters. But um, during the Second World War, Ingleburg Farm took in soldiers' uniforms and they cleaned and darned and ironed them uh, for, a, for, a, for a fee. But this watchtower, says there were others who had been called in for work who became so busy with printing things pertaining to this world working in machine shops producing instruments of war or serving soldiers in canteens that's military campaign can canteens that they were soon lost their appreciation for the truth and were lost in the sea eventually drifting right back into the world no longer having a desire for the good things of the lord and his full-time ministerial service so under the direction of the Bethel headquarters, young men who went for um, work for the Jehovah's Witness organization, it says they ended up working in machine shops producing instruments of war. Now, these machine shops, they don't name the company, but I found out it's the Taylor Craft Aircraft Corporation. It was owned by Mr. Taylor. He was a very wealthy Jehovah's Witness. And he did what many other Jehovah's Witnesses do who have window cleaning companies. He employed other Jehovah's Witnesses to work in his his company. So between the wars, he made mostly civil aircraft in his factory. But during the Second World War, Taylor Craft Aircraft Corporation, which was owned by Mr. Taylor, who was a Jehovah's Witness, and employed numerous Jehovah's Witnesses in their factory, in, produced just military aircraft. So this yeah, watchtower that admits that Jehovah's Witnesses in the Second World War, whilst in um, certain countries they were being imprisoned for refusing to fight, here in Australia they were working in machine shops for the Taylor Craft Aircraft Corporation making military aircraft. That's not right, is it? Not Christian, is it, to take sides in war? Or well, anything to do with, with destruction of yeah. human life? So they made a mistake there, didn't they? But Mike, they're still making a mistake today, because well, today. No, well, I never said Jehovah's Witnesses are perfect. But, but, I never said that. Well, then why should I want anything to do with them? Why should I want? Men. If I want to find a religious organisation, shouldn't I join the Christadelphians or the Quakers? Because they don't fight in wars, nor do the well, Dawn Bible students. But the Jehovah's Witnesses do, because today, 
If you go to the IRS American tax records, IRS means Inland Revenue Service, you'll find a company, a trust, a not-for-profit trust called the Henrietta M. Riley Trust. Henrietta M. Riley was a woman who died in the 1940s. She left all her money to the Watchtower, but it didn't go directly to the Watchtower. It was, um, it was invested in various companies and all the share dividends, the annual profits after the bank's deductions for running the trust fund and taxation went to the B Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York. Uh -huh. Now, the Henrietta M. Riley Trust, um, I've got their records up to 2017. I think in 2015, I think they got just under, they donated just under $700,000 to the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York. And the sort of company that they had shares in and which they got uh, share dividends from included arms companies such as Boeing and Northrop Grumman, which make military aircraft. So just as in the Second World War, Jehovah's Witnesses were complicit in that by working in arms companies, today Jehovah's Witnesses also are quite happy um, for their governing body to receive share dividends from arms companies. They're not pacifist. I don't know about that last one, but, but um, all those things, if they were, that is true, they're not right, are they? They shouldn't do that. Then why should I want anything but, to do with an organisation that makes so many errors? You've already made your mind up, and you, the, the fact that you've pulled out all these facts shows to me that you're quite a hardened um, guy against Jehovah's Witnesses, so there's no point in us talking anymore. You already know all, all, all what you need to know. You, you deal with it. Mike, why did the Jehovah's Witnesses join the United Nations in 1992, taking out NGO status? As an NGO, that means non-governmental organisation, formally taking out membership of the United Nations, which four yeah. years earlier, in your Revelation, its grand climax at handbook, you say the UN is of the devil. And then four years later, in 1992, you join the UN. When you, you should be really happy knowing all those things. You, you know the truth, don't you? Yeah, well. yeah, the Jehovah's well, Witnesses yeah. governing well, body are a bunch of hypocrites, well, aren't they? They're a bunch of money-loving, money-grabbing hypocrites who don't love Jehovah well, God and have no desire to follow Jehovah at all. All they want is money. Yeah, have, have you have you been a Jehovah's Witness before? Never, no, no. Okay. Well, you know, are you just systematically ringing people up to give out all this great knowledge yeah. and try and wreck people's faith? So I'm, not, I'm not trying to wreck people's I faith. I'm, I'm telling people they should they should go to Jesus. Jesus said, go to come to me, all you who labour and are heavily laden, and I, Jesus, will give you rest. Matthew 11, yeah, 28. So don't, don't go to me, don't go that. to the Pope, don't go to the Mormons, don't go to the Baptists, don't go to the Pentecostals, go to Jesus. Jesus is the one who gives you rest. That's the Sabbath rest, forgiveness from your sins, and the righteousness Christ imputed to you. Don't go to me for that because I can't give you that. And don't go to the Pope or some TV preacher or the Mormons or the Pentecostals or the Baptists because they can't give you that either. Go to Jesus. That's Mike, that's well, my advice to you, Mike. Go to Jesus. That's good. Thank you for your advice. All right. Appreciate well, thank that. you, sir, for your help. But, but I don't think we need to talk anymore. All right. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Bye-bye.